I know some people may speak in the neighborhood that they've actually seen water, which they've never had, and I can't say that we've had a worse of a winter or spring showers. Um, and lastly, one of the concerns that I just have that is probably a quick fix is during this whole construction site recently, there's there's nobody cutting the lawn. It's it's growing. It's kind of out of control over there. And, um, usually they have somebody come down, you know, once a week, I guess it's from the school department or I'm not sure if the handle let me kind of edges and, and cuts the grass. I know there's not much grass in that area, but up near my property in the back of it and kind of on the border of Naomi Street there certainly is. Um, and last but not least, just me personally, um, you know, we work together and thank you for um, you know your help with it all. Um, I was woken up one morning, a little before 7 a.m. when this whole construction started, to bulldozing. I seriously thought something was, um, you know, something was <laughs> invading my house. Um, I was, I do not get the Bristol Phoenix, so perhaps I have a little bit of knowledge deficit to it all. Um, but I was not informed of any of this project, so that's kind of what we had spoken, and I kind of got a little more of the gist of it all. I certainly, when I saw the plans, didn't uh, look for the shop foot uh, contraption there. Um, I know that it's in the kind of the final phases of at least this first phase of the this whole project. Uh, I know it was a grant, um, and the goal is to maybe extend it all the way up towards the school. I certainly think there's a better place to put the shop foot. And I also feel like, uh, just personally, there's this fence that's gonna go up around it and back of my property, which is literally three feet, maybe four feet away from a fence I have, so it's going to kind of look like an eyesore, um, unless they can maybe stagger it down. I, I would love to not have to see that there. Um, so that's kind of my two cents, and it'll probably all come to light when the rest of the neighborhood has to speak. So I think I just was probably the last to sign in, so was the first to talk. So that's my uh, story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I'm actually going to defer to Dave Marshall. Dave Marshall? Yes, thank you. So, Peter, just so I'm clear, do you have a comment? I'll make a comment. I'll call you a bathroom. Okay, yeah, that's what you got. School administrators and school committee, good evening. Yes, my name is David Marshall. I'm a proud Mount Hope High School class of 1994 and an Iowa Street resident. Uh, Mr. Chairperson, could I ask your permission to come up to the school committee just to give you a paper copy of my comments this evening? Okay, absolutely. Thank you, sir. directly across the street from homes, parked vehicles, 
and the individuals who wish to enjoy their property without the constant fear of stray flying objects causing damage, injury, or even death. As taxpayers who fund both the school district and the town of Bristol, which leases this land to the district, we feel that the actions of the planners of the CAGE project are blatant and egregious. Our third point. The safety of the general public has been ignored in that the area once utilized by the town as an unofficial parking site for attendees of such events as the 4th of July celebration is now eliminated. That area once afforded parking for 50 plus cars in the positioning of police, fire, and rescue vehicles along with several out of town buses. Cars will now be parked on both sides of Naomi Street providing little more than a bike path in the middle of the street. Police, fire, and rescue vehicles will not be able to get through Naomi Street during such community events. Also, where will the parents and spectators park when they come to see their Olympians participate in hammer throw or shot put? Number four, the golf factor already created is causing disruption to the traffic flow and will increase the propensity for future accidents involving pedestrians and vehicles. That situation will evolve further in the utilization of the cage for sporting events when it is uh, viewed by spectators. Number five, as with other recreational sports complexes in town, there is an opportunity for increased mischief and vandalism. That situation will affect not only the leased property on which the cage is installed, but also it will have an impact the neighborhood will spill over with late night noise, trash disposal, and vandalism of residencies. Number six, there is the potential for personal injury and property damage to our neighbors and pedestrians as a result of unsupervised use of the facility, either by students challenging each other to throw over the nylon netting, or by unauthorized use of the cage after school hours. Even during school hours, it will be difficult to supervise the proper use of the cage by athletic department personnel, since it is at the westernmost border of the sports complex leased land. It is impossible to monitor activity visually at the CAGE facility from the athletic department's office. Number seven, the CAGE planners were unaware of, did not consider, or were totally unconcerned about the impact on the property values of the homes on Naomi Street. Some may indicate tongue in cheek that one cannot quantitatively calculate the impact on valuations and saleability of affected properties. To those, we can only respond with the real estate industry's mantra, location, location, location. Also, to those observers, we invite them to imagine the cage as if it were erected in front of their own homes. Number eight, since the drainage planning, engineering, and implementation at the sports field, at least one of the residents of Niagara Street has begun to experience water in their basement. Number nine, Unsuspecting elders who visit Naomi Street family and friends on the 4th of July will be confronted with the potential of driving into a black chain link fence, which was heretofore non-existent. That chain link, which is approximately 12 feet from the edge of the street, now cordons off the field where holiday visitors normally park their vehicles. Number 10. There have to be better locations for hammer throw and shot put activities than this close proximity to our neighborhood. Perhaps a closer location to the school, such as behind Building G, where activities can be better monitored, would be feasible since the current location is not. We also believe that the school committee should weigh the benefit to the few athletes who may be interested in these dangerous sports, versus the many taxpayers, residents, and general public who may be negatively impacted by the location of the cage. Point number 11. Attached to this letter are five articles addressing the dangers of the hammer throw in the shot put events. The first article is from Digital Track and Field, which discusses considerations and safety steps to be taken to avoid accidents. The next four articles explain the deaths of individuals involved as participants, event officials, or spectators, all of which were deemed accidental after officials thought they had done everything humanly possible to avoid catastrophe. Aside from all of the above stated reasons, the cage's visual impact on the neighborhood is unacceptable. In closing, Mr. Superintendent, we believe that the cage needs to be dismantled and relocated. We will anxiously await your response to our concerns, and we appreciate your time. 
We, excuse me, also, we welcome any response from the elected officials of the Honorable Bristol Warren Regional School District School Committee. Thank you for the comments and the letter. Um, I know that the superintendent will get back to you with a reply. And, uh, and, and the school committee right now does not have this on our agenda, so we really can't engage in a discussion over it. I understand that, Mr. Chairperson. This was our first opportunity. Uh, we had not received any information prior to any of the construction project. And Mr. O'Dell was uh, very nice to come by our residence on uh, Saturday to let us know of this meeting and that public comment would be accepted. So this was our first opportunity. Thank you for coming. We'll, we'll make sure this song gets back. We appreciate it. Thank you for your attention. Do you, you ready now or you want someone else to go? No, actually, I'm, I'm all yeah. You're all set? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Paula, you see now? <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Paula Martinez de Some of you may remember me as Timmy Aj. I started off um, as a teacher assistant in um, the Bristol Warren School Department. I became a student teacher, a substitute teacher, until I got a job um, <clears throat> pardon me, in Providence as a science teacher. Um, I'm a supporter of sports. Uh, we have had um, where I have had a uh, martial arts academy in this town for over 30 years. It still exists. My son is now doing that. Uh, I am a Patriots fan, and later discussion, I can tell you who my favorite baseball team is. Um, with that being said, um, I'm all for the track and field. I think it's great. However, when the construction started, um, I did check into the uh, Bristol Town Hall, I checked into the school department, and there was no um, plan, there wasn't anything drawn up. Um, there was nothing presented to us, um, I don't know if there was anything in the Gazette um, or the Phoenix, uh, however, it, everything seemed extremely clandestine until the cage went up. And this obviously did a lot of things. I know this is not part of your agenda, um, but with technology being the way it is, I'm sure that the future will be invited to your meetings. Uh, so very quickly, when I got news this weekend, I tried to do some research and to support Dave and my fellow friends and neighbors, <clears throat> a couple of things. I live right across the street from the football field, which I love. I get to watch games for free. Um, with that being said, it was a soggy field not many puddles. I, in the 17 years I've lived there, and I'm the sole owner, I've, you know, 17 years, never a drop of um, water has entered my basement. I hope that continues because now we have not soggy, but pools that are in that field, and that concerns me very much. So um, that's the first thing. The second thing is this, this went up very quickly. Nothing was presented to us, and there are um, proportions that need to be done in the construction of this. So, with that being said, um, there's the National Collegiate Athletic Association rule construction of facilities. I can leave this with you. Measurements are important according to this. Metric measurements are precise for the safety of the participants. They do not guarantee the safety of the referees, nor the spectators, nor does it state, let me see if I can find it, um, it says it can reduce injury, but not stop it. So this is something that I think really needs to be addressed. I don't know if it's been addressed. We don't know if it's been addressed because nothing was presented to us. Um, it is dangerous, especially when you have things that, um, um, but the, where you throw the, the hammers, the shot put, and, and all that stuff. The International Association of the Athletics Federation, they have a list of maintenance. Okay, and there is a section for drainage. Uh, part of it, and you may get confused, part of it is indoor, part of it is outdoor, but um, they have general aspects. Lack of maintenance leads to the deterioration and is costly to rectify. It projects a bad image and can result in overspending of annual budgets. 
Congratulations on your grant. I would like to know, as well as my fellow neighbors, they recommend seasonal maintenance. Where is this money going to come from? You're looking at materials, you're looking at labor, you're looking at, you know, you're looking at people overseeing the maintenance. Um, there's other things as well in here that talks about the drainage, that talks about cleaning. Um, whatever agents you use for cleaning outdoors um, as a science teacher, there's a concern of what's going into groundwater and right here into Silver Creek. So there's that as well. Um, and again, to support, um, I think Dave had um, information that was a little more up to date than mine. I have something from the Athletic Business Magazine, Catastrophic Injuries, Pull Focus on Field Events. Um, this was December 2008, and a lot of injuries do occur, especially in the discus and hammer throw with ricochet. Now, I know that you actually have the, um, to bow the cage is a good thing, but it still happens within the cage. And this is dangerous to the, our students, our kids. There have been fatal injuries, and there have been life-changing injuries. Statistically, I think there's only 118 per year of that, 56 is in field, um, field and track. Most of that is in running. But I don't want any of my neighbors, their children, passerby, students in this school, just one fatality or life-changing incident is one too many. I don't like those statistics. I want zero. So um, here I have just a list of, of um, I know I bulleted these. Um, maybe I left it in the car. You have a list of things that students are supposed to do before they graduate um, in their senior year. One of it is research. A lot of it is communication. Um, writing pervasive essays and things of that nature. So I'm standing before you now to take what you teach in your system and apply it to the transparency and the community because this is what we teach in our schools. We're a team, we're a, commu um, a community, and we need to collaborate together with this so that it's a win-win for everybody. So thank you very much.